Hello everybody, Big Bong here, and today I am with Geneviève, who is a French teacher, specifically focusing on the dialect spoken in Quebec, the French-speaking part of Canada. So first of all, could you please um, briefly introduce yourself and explain what exactly do you do? Yes, of course. My name is Geneviève, as you just said. Um, I am the founder and a content uh, producer for Ma Prof de Français, which used to be just a YouTube channel at the beginning, but now is a full-scale business whose uh, mission is to teach, to help uh, learners and immigrants who choose Quebec to live, to better understand Quebecers by teaching them the language we speak here, the Quebec French, and also, uh, more globally, the culture, Quebec culture. More about the culture. I heard that most of the people in Quebec don't like being considered Canadian. Without going too much in detail about the, the history behind that, uh, do you personally not like the term Canadian French? Because sometimes people say uh, uh, he speaks French from Canada or she's Canadian French. And also, sometimes we hear the term joual. What's the difference between Québécois and joual? Okay, the first part of your question, I personally identify more as a Quebecer than a Canadian, but it's very personal. I know a lot of people share that, that feeling here in the province, but I know some Quebecers who feel Canadian and that's a very personal thing. The Canadian French is more general, like inside of Canada, there are a lot of different communities like you have the Acadians in the Maritimes. Inside Quebec there are a few accents as well and if you go west like the, the French from Manitoba and the French from uh, Les Franco-Ontariens from Ontario like it's all different varieties of French themselves so I think Canadian French is, is broader but what I teach is Quebec French is because that's what I know it's the variety of the province here. So they don't like the, the term Canadian Uh, but here in Quebec, and especially in the city I live, uh, there is one team, that's the, the, the Habs, the Canadians, uh, les Canadiens de Montréal. Um, so why, why do we not like uh, the term Canadian when we're speaking about us, but then our team is called the Canadians? Yes, that's a very interesting uh, historic fact, because actually at the beginning, the word Canada referred to one of the French colonies and the Canadian were the French settlers here in Canada, in the colony. Then came the English and there has been a need to distinguish French Canadians and English Canadians. But for a long time, like the, the term Canadian was the French speakers. Here it's only in the, in the 60s that um, the term Quebecer appeared. Oh. Um, Quebec has gone through a big period of profound social changes here called the Quiet Revolution, La Révolution Tranquille. And it, it came with a big, 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 strong sense of identity. And it's then that the, the term Québécois, Quebecer, came, came along. So that's why the, the Canadian, it's, it's historically French Canadians. And that was the, the name they were given at the time. Interesting. And how French do you still feel? Because... Originally, back in the days, um, the, the ancestors were French, right? And sometimes I hear people speak Quebecer when they say, oh, c'est un anglais ou c'est un français. Uh, they would speak about an English Canadian or a French Canadian, right? So how yeah. French do you still feel? Because as you mentioned, there are clear differences between the people from France in terms of uh, linguistics, but also in terms of um, culturally. Um, personally, I don't feel French. <laughs> <laughs> We're North Americans. That happens to speak French. We're not French in North America. Okay. That's how I feel. I think the culture, the dominant culture here is way more American than European. But we still have some little traits here and there that reminiscent of the French heritage. Um, I think it's widely accepted that gastronomy here uh, in Quebec is higher than in the rest of Canada and the States. We have different ways of greeting people. Here in Quebec, we still do la bise, comme en France. Right. Kisses on the cheeks. Um, and like my Canadian friends, they don't do that. They will do hugs, side hugs, yeah. but n not la bise. What made you become a French teacher? Were you uh, considering that when you were uh, young or did, was it something that came uh, maybe later in life? I was not considering to become a teacher as a kid, but I loved it. <laughs> I'm a, a big sister. I have two younger sisters. And I remember we used to play schools. I was teaching them. So I really enjoy to share my knowledge. I taught music for uh, 15 or 16 years. Um, wow. In the first life, I'm a trained musician. So I, I taught saxophone for a, a while, quite a while. That's super cool. Yeah. And, and then I 
came back to school to get a second degree in translation, like really sparked a, a love for um, linguistics and everything. So it kind of naturally I started to teach at the university. I, I taught uh, French grammar to the Francophone students. And then I got a, a job as a teaching assistant in the French as a foreign language class. And I loved the experience so much. It was really great to share my culture, not only my language, but my, my culture uh, with the uh, international students. So that really sparked the, uh, the interest to become a teacher. How do you present yourself? Like, what's your title uh, officially? That depends on how I feel that day. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have my elevator pitch and my, my title done, doesn't come uh, like always the same way. I would say I'm a content creator. Okay. Sometimes I say I'm a teacher. Sometimes I say, yeah, it really depends on how I feel that day. Do you teach only the dialect or also standard French? Like, for example, can an absolute beginner take lessons with you? Are your lessons in French or in English, first of all? And um, can anybody uh, join without knowing anything about French? All my content is made in French. And I mostly focus on the colloquial uh, register of the language, so the more informal. So for that reason, total beginners, my, my material is not really aimed for them for the simple reason that you kind of need to learn to walk before you run. Uh, you need to know how to construct the, the good structure, the good grammar before kind of switching it around and play with it. Would you say that you have more uh, English speakers or French speakers taking your courses? I don't think I have a whole lot of French speakers buying the courses. Um, it's mostly non-native speakers who, uh, who wish to come and live in Quebec. My material is more for uh, higher intermediate and advanced students who already have a good grasp about the standard language and want to get that little understanding to, uh, to get more of the informal language. So uh, they're not really uh, native speakers, no. they're not French speakers. Right, and, and is there a link between your online courses and your videos or... Uh... Is it also different? Um, I think my YouTube channel is is broader, like the the, the aspect and the subject that I cover on the, on the channel. Um, I do a lot of uh, France versus Quebec uh, videos and content because uh, people love it <laughs> works well, so yeah. much. Uh, so I do a lot of that, and it has nothing to do with my courses. My courses are more focused on. I have two actually, two online courses. One is um, oral comprehension, but really for for the Quebec popular accent or slang, I would say. Um, and the other one is pronunciation, because like the differences are very big differences between the pronunciation in France and here in Quebec. So I was thinking, well, if the person is learning the language to come and live here, why not practice already with the sounds we have here? There's a few sounds we use every day in Quebec, uh, in some regions of France, are not even pronounced anymore, don't exist anymore. So I thought it would be a good idea for the learners to have a, a place to, to practice and to get the sounds uh, in their mouth. That's interesting because I'm from France and French people, when they try to imitate the accent, they would exaggerate it. Uh, do you record the samples yourself or do you take other people speaking? And would that be a strong, thick accent that's very difficult or something that's a bit more standard? Um, my course is standard Quebec French. So it's not that very thick Quebec accent. What would you say is um, the, the best thing as a teacher? I would say that the thing that is more satisfying, that, that is more rewarding, is when people come back to me with testimonials about how my content helped them in their daily lives. I have a student, um, she's like, oh, I just started your course. And now I can understand my boss and my colleagues so much better at work and it really facilitates my life. And I was like, oh, wow, because we're putting in so much effort to create quality content and to, to help people. So it's always really rewarding to have that feedback that it really makes a difference for someone. Back to the language itself, the French spoken in Quebec. Uh, I don't want to spoil your, your uh, courses. Maybe it can be a teaser, uh, but what would be your best piece of advice for people who want to learn uh, the French from Quebec? You're not spoiling anything. It's a, it's a very basic advice that people will hear uh, from anyone who's into language learning is get exposed to the language. Whatever language you are learning, whether it be Quebec French, French French, or 
Ukrainian or whatever <laughs> whatever language you want to learn is get exposed to the language um, watch movies listen to music do activities that you like in the language you're trying to learn let's say I don't know you want to do yoga instead of going to your local uh, center community center book an online French French course in yoga it's really the more time you spent with the language and I stole that one from uh, Hugo from La Chaine uh, Inner French. Right. I really like the way he puts it. It's like you have to spend time with the language, really. Like the more you get exposed to it, let just the brain do the work for itself. <laughs> Speaking of which, have you experienced it yourself? How many languages do you speak or have you learned in the past? I have learned Gaelic, actually, Irish. Oh, wow. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Irish language. I went up until B2, I think. I did an official test, uh, so I got the intermediate level. level, And then I learned uh, Portuguese. Nice. Uh, yeah, Brazilian Portuguese. And so that gives me kind of a passive knowledge of uh, Spanish because the languages are really close. Now, beyond the language... Can you also imitate or are you interested in performing different accents, whether in French or in Portuguese or maybe in Irish? Hmm. I am really not good at that. I really love hearing different accents. Like I, I think it's so rich, so, so rich. Uh, just, the, I don't know, different parts of Ireland, like the, the, the English is so different. And when I was in Ireland, actually, and my, my foster mom, she was like, oh, my God, you sound so American. Of, oh, yeah. Because, of course, my, my English, I learned here. Right. And so she found it very amusing that I used, like, oh, it's awesome. I was always saying that. Oh, it's awesome. Everything was awesome. But I speak with that strong French accent. So I speak American English with this, the, the French accent from Quebec. Anyway, so <laughs> it, it, it's fascinating. I love um, accents, but I'm really not good at doing them myself. Right. Actually, I tried this summer. I have an Acadian friend in New Brunswick, so I received him on the channel to do kind of an interview about uh, the, 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 the French from uh, Lacadie. And I tried to imitate it and I thought I was not that bad but it was a complete <laughs> fail so i'm like not risking anymore and you don't want to insult anyone like it well but it's different because uh, it can be delicate. yeah but i mean let's say you were with your acadian friend or i'm with um quebecois friends and they ask you they challenge you so it's not insulting it's different than being with a bunch of uh, people from where you live like a bunch of french people and you just want to mock the accent to make them laugh do your quebec friend uh, ask you very often to to do the quebec accent sometimes sometimes but good. you know it's i think it's psychological because maybe it's because in montreal uh, we are more multicultural but sometimes i don't tell people i'm from france and i would maybe insist a bit more on the 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 quebec sounds right And so people would think I'm born and raised here. Maybe I have French parents, but I was born and raised in Montreal. But then when they discover I am French, like, oh, but you don't have the French accent. But on the other hand, if I say I'm French and then they ask me, oh, uh, can you uh, imitate the accent? And I try to do exactly the same thing. They say, oh, no, 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 you don't have it. You don't, you don't get it at all. <laughs> More on the technical aspect of, of creating content and having a YouTube channel. Uh, we're not trying to create competition, obviously. But uh, nowadays, I know that a lot of teachers Uh, who want to just be known, um, they have to go through that process of um, exploring social media. So what would be your piece of advice uh, regarding that? Well, social media at large, like I'm not very active and I'm not very consistent on Facebook nor Instagram. So I really focused more on my YouTube channel. So I think that's where I could give advice. Um, I would say like before you launch your channel, just find your niche, find what it is you want to do and try not to get all over the place because uh, I actually just did an accelerator. It was kind of a course for content creator on YouTube. And it's one of the things they, they taught us is like, if you're all over the place, then people won't know what to expect from your channel and they're less likely to sign up for it. Like if you have a clear offer, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to talk about. And it interests the, the person, they're more likely to just click and subscribe. Uh, so that would be my, my advice. Like 
know where you're going, at least have a direction and stick to it. Right. Yeah, I should probably take that advice as well because I'm going all over the place because my problem is the languages. So some people, they want to see French on my channel. Some other people, they want to see Japanese. I obviously want to uh, explore all the languages. I think it's still possible to do that, but I need to find a more consistent way of making my videos. Yeah, but in your case, if that's what you do. You, you learn languages and you lo love to share them. So I think it, it still is consistent, even though some people may prefer content just in one language. True. So you mentioned uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube. You have a, a website. Uh, can people find you on other social media or do you have anything else you'd like to promote? Uh, that's pretty much it. I have a Patreon as well. Um, on my Patreon, I create my exercises from real content. So I'm going to take a scene from a movie or a podcast or uh, 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 advertisement I see on TV, which has a, something interesting in it. And I will create an exercise from that. So it's very uh, complementary, the, the two things. Like you get the theory and then after you can apply it in real life stuff. So Patreon would be another place they can find me. Uh, ma prof de français in only one word, ma prof de français.ca, that's the main website. And of course on YouTube, ma prof de français as well. Uh, well, thank you so much for your time and for uh, joining me. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing more videos uh, you create. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much uh, for inviting me. So guys, if you're interested in learning the French spoken in Quebec, you know what to do. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know with a thumbs up and in the comments. Don't forget to share and subscribe to support this channel and I'll see you very soon for more interviews. Bye.